Hey guys, welcome back to Enlightened Turtle. It's your host Kev here. So me and Taz are we're on a mission today. We're on a mission to try and find some Roman monuments. Um, there's a Roman wall not too far from here. I'm going to go and check that out. There's a Roman monument, uh, like a pillar uh, of sorts, about 10 minutes from here. So I don't know if you're going to be able to hear this because the sound, it's a bit windy here. But as you can see, we've got Ormsgate Parish Church, which we'll check out. A clock tower that used to have a cross on it that was replaced in 1876. We have a place here called Two Saints, Two Saints Place. So we'll check that out. Obviously, St. Helens Road. We've uh, we've gone through that. You know what that's about. Um, and what's the other thing I wanted to look at there? Oh, that's right. This 65 Bersco Street, the Farmers Club, is a good example of a Greek revivalist style architecture. It was built in 1830 as a dispensary with money left for the wife of Dr. Joseph Brandeth for the poor of Ormsgate. So with money left over for the poor kids, they spent that money on building this. Come on. So me and Taz are in the Commonwealth uh, graveyard uh, from the Commonwealth. People who died from the Commonwealth during the wars. Um, and I just noticed looking around, you know, a lot of these graves have been uh, have been, I wouldn't say it's the right word, reburied. People have been buried quite recently. Um, like, and a lot of the headstones seem almost brand new. If you look at this one, for example, the date on it is 1901 to 1979 and 1898 to 1982. So that's still 40 years old. And, uh, oh, I'm on the wrong one there, sorry. And it, it's a brand new headstone. Um, and I've noticed that if you, if you look around, uh, there's quite a lot that have, they look brand new. Um, with gold writing on it's just an observation but yeah I've noticed there's, you, you find so many Celtic crosses in these old churches you know it's awesome but yeah we're, we're on our way towards this old church now so let's have a little look Sorry, dead briefly, if anybody wants to go and check out uh, that video I did, uh, the 2.0 version of you need to unlearn everything you have learned. I put images in there of technology that allegedly was around a couple of hundred years ago where people could see spirits and communicate with the dead and things like that. Well, that is kind of how the technology looked like. It was almost like a mirror, a plasma, an area of plasma generated and the image was seeable uh, in like the, the mirror portion there. Interesting that. Here we go, let's get through these trees. It's obviously a larger monument there to someone. Uh, sorry, do you know, I've just been saying about uh, the technology that I was saying is in one of them older videos. If you take a look at this, this is exactly what I'm saying. That's almost like a replica of what was down there. And it's almost like a portal, a doorway. 
It's very elaborate. All over the place. This one's the same, but it's got less detail. But it's almost got the portal on the tombstone there. With the, the symbolism of the energy. The patterns, as you can see. Given like a flora, flora pattern for the energy. But yeah, let's, uh, let's keep moving through because God respect the dead, you know. Like I say, yeah. It's got something on the side of the wall here. Let's see what it says. In fact, there's writing here that's barely visible. If you take a look at this. That writing is it's barely visible. It is writing. You can see the shapes. But it's been eroded away. Not sure if there's anything else over there. John Claudius Brandet, 1795. Have you noticed A and E? For me, that's the symbol for ether. That's the symbol for ether. So, here lie the remains of Joseph Brandet, MD, medical doctor, OB. April 1815 AE30 trying to say at 69 also of Catherine Brandeth OB 27th of April 1827 Let's take a walk around eh, see what we can see interesting things that Alan Wilson discusses is when he bought that church in Wales <clears throat> and he was able to find the stone uh, Artorus Rex that stone correct me if I'm wrong maybe this was another stone but I believe that was a stone that was an ancient stone being placed into the wall of the church along with other stones Interesting clock up there with an X in the clock with wavy lines. And as you can see, those here, uh, those things on the side there, on the on the roof, I'd love to know what they are. I'd really love to know what they are because I've been in chapels everywhere: Roslyn Chapel, Salisbury Cathedral, York Cathedral, ministers, at loads of places, and they all have these things on the top. I'd really love to know what they are. Well I've come walking around the other side and it's quite windy here so hopefully you can hear me. And there's this big black thing. Couldn't for the love of me tell you what it's there for. But there's also that's the other tower just there. Because there's the main main building with the clock. There's like a side tower on the attached to the side. And you can you can see a little bit of the stained glass window here. Now I'm just gonna have to try and climb up here to show you this. People believe that churches were able to do a place of harmonic resonance, energies and all this kind of stuff. Look at that, look at that pattern there. That is some kind of energetic pattern. And if you can see it closely, you see similar like energetic patterns like up there. I will try and stick some here. Uh, I'll sort swapping out. I'll make sure that is a uh, is understand what I'm saying, but Yeah, there's 
there's all kinds of stuff up on that bottom. Yeah, and I don't know what this big black thing's here for with the patterns on it. Inside an old church. No. Look at the wood in here compared to the St. Helens Church. Look at the age and the weathering on the walls. And yet they were supposed to have been built for similar time periods. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And again, if you look at the gate, you won't see any crosses on this gate and you won't see any fish. Yeah, there's a little one for the flat earthers. North, south, east, west. Summit, winter, disc. When the sun is in the south, it's winter in the north. When the sun is in the north, it's summer. The shadow. Shadow was pointing east. I don't know if that means anything. Here's the Roman column. Noisy truck. Here's the column. Let's see what it says. This monument is part is part of one of the Roman Doric columns which were incorporated into Ormskirk Parish Church during the rebuilding of the nave. My God, oh, there's so many trucks going through here and it's a small, a small road. Let me try reading that again. This, this ties into what I've just been saying before about Alan Wilson, when he said he discovered a stone built into the church. So are you ready? This monument is part of one of the Roman Doric columns which were incorporated into Ormskirk Parish Church during the rebuilding of the nave and aisles in classical style around 1729. It was removed from the church around 1885 when the nave and aisle arcades were again rebuilt, this time in a Gothic style, to the design of Paley and Austin. We'll Google them. It was removed to this location in 1994 as part of the re-landscaping of the park which jointly funded by Ormskirk Parish Church and West Lancashire District Council, blah blah blah. So, this column, they, they claim it's Roman. It was part of a church and then it was removed from the church during a reconstruction. So many trucks, it's unbelievable. So yet they claim that this was placed into the church during the reconstruction and then removed, that was around 1729, and then removed from the church around about 1885 and then placed in this location in 1994. It's not a lot of history to go with that really, is the Roman Dorich columns. We'll Google that one. So yeah, there it is. And this is obviously very modern, this part on the top. Um, but you know, there's actually a church by my house that's on top of a hill. And it's got something similar to this round the back. And it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It's far older than the church itself. Um, so who knows, maybe that, that other thing's something Roman as well. It does have similar patterns on it, to be fair. They say Roman, is it Roman, is it British? Who knows? But let's go and try and find the Roman wall anyway.
here's the clock tower. I've noticed these bollards, they're very specifically shaped to represent the different monuments around the town. But there's the clock tower anyway. The old streets. Don't see how small that door is. Hopefully you can hear me here. There's a lot of a lot of work going on around the corner there, but on that clock tower, they've totally replaced the clock face. That would have been interesting to see what the original face looked like. Me and Tice just got back to the car. So our next move is now to find the Roman wall. Just a quick little uh, recap. <clears throat> As we went walking around there, obviously we've seen the old church, uh, a lot of old tombstones in the old Commonwealth to uh, graveyard, which I noticed a, a pattern on a lot of the tombstones, which I'd never really thought about before, but it does look very similar to the patterns of the machines used um, a couple of hundred years ago. If these images are real, that is, to see apparitions, um, to help manifest apparitions into some kind of plasma field, some kind of spiritual vortex, I, I don't know, I don't want to go into that too much, but it, it was interesting, the, the, the rose patterns as well. And then obviously we've seen the, the clock tower, um, which again was interesting, you know, the original clock face had been removed, uh, loads of patterns on there, and then you've got like a water spout as well. Now, if that maybe was some kind of, you know, healing water properties, you know, maybe the, the townsfolk are really healthy, they can go and help themselves to water. I mean, we have to pay for water now, so they were doing something right back then. So we've run into a bit of a problem here. Taz isn't too happy about it. So we've drove to a town called Latham, which is another medieval town. Well, pre-medieval. And there's a, like I say, a Roman wall slash Roman fort just in the fields, a bit far back that way through the country lane. Um, but I noticed there was nowhere to stop, so I couldn't stop the car anywhere to get out and go and take a look. So we've come to like the, the very edge of Latham Town. Um, hopefully we can just jump out here now, take a walk, get across some fields and go and see you. You ready, Taz? Well, what can I say, guys? Me and Taz were here walking around the fields of the, of the northwest here. And it wasn't too far to drive, like I say, from Ormsgate. We come in around these country roads uh, and it is telling me, I don't know if you can see it from here, basically that that mound over there is the fort. Obviously you've got these irrigation ditches, farmers fields, uh, to try and navigate from one side to the next. Watch yourself, here it is. Come on buddy. Let's get over here and have a look. There's that mound over there, and there's a mound over there, and then the floor drops in, as you can see. Go on, Taz up. Taz has to jump up. So, if the, I guess they're claiming this is the Roman fort here, which this is like the perimeter of it here. See, it goes up. Along to by where Taz is, down and then back over here. And 
here's all this old stone. Lots of it strewn around on the ground. But as you can tell, looks as though the farmers have been coming over here and helping themselves, metal detecting and whatever else. Obviously there's some larger stone here. And if you come down here, there's quite a lot of large stone here. This is the materials that was used in the construction of the, the old fort. But there's some bigger stones, bigger stone, bigger stone, bigger stone. And to be honest, I'm a little bit disappointed. I was hoping to come here today and see like an old foundation, an old wall, something. Not just a bunch of ditches and mounds in the middle of the farmer's field. Ah oh, well. tried our best. Perhaps this was once part of the construction. That was either ancient British or Roman. Who knows? Talk about Millionaire's Row. Some of the houses around here must be worth at least five to ten million pounds. Well guys, I've just been Googling that Roman fort <clears throat> just to double check to make sure that I hadn't missed anything. And uh, I'll put the images on here now. The aerial survey here actually looks like it's quite a large place. A very large complex, in fact. Um, I couldn't see much detail on the ground here because obviously it's the end of spring. We're approaching summertime now, so all the vegetation's in full flora, so I, it was hard to, to discern really, but yeah, we came all this way for nothing, unfortunately, but like I said, I wanted to come down here and take a little look, and I, I in, inspired anyone, uh, get out there, man, go and take a look at these sites in your local area, because I, for one, didn't even know this existed. This was on my front doorstep. Now, is it British? Is it Roman? Well... You can, I'll put the information in there and I, I'll let you decide. So here's the dispense that, with the money that was left over, was allegedly built. So the money that was left over, they decided to spend it all on that grand building, so they're giving it to the poor. Where's the logic there? And if you see that sign there, Yeah, that's right. The College of Flat Earth. <laughs> a joke. Apparently it's a, it's a farmer's college back there. Don't know what the E stands for, but the F stands for farmers. Ecological maybe, something like that. But yeah, so that's that other building that was uh, on the sign earlier on. Um, that apparently was built after the husband had passed away and left the fortune to the missus who decided to spend it on that. Since I've got a bit of wind covered here. Famous word. Uh, we're gonna take a little walk to a nature reserve. It was on the way back home, so I thought I'd, uh, I'd stop off. This is just a little treat. Just to really emphasize how ancient Britain is. There's a Mesolithic site down here. Uh, I believe it's got footprints. Uh, I've never actually been here, even though it's been on my doorstep like forever. Now, we just came from about five miles that way, which is where we went to see the Roman fort, alleged Roman fort. 
which turned out to be all underneath the soil anyway. Um, you've got St. Helen's Well, which is in the little medieval village just through there, which is only about 10 minutes away. So I probably should have done this when I've done the St. Helen's video, really. But this is supposed to be like a really beautiful place to come and visit. So I'm out with Taz. Thought we'd go and check it out as the weather has gone really nice actually. I think you get like certain birds and stuff like that that you find around here. Which another little nugget that will be going in the next Merlin video when I finally get around to doing it is that did you know the area that I said up north of here further up into Lancaster sorry Lancashire and I said there's two two water sources possibly spoke of of where Merlin could be could be submerged here's a little water source here but the other two that I've I envisioned that Merlin had been buried in obviously it's mythology would have been further north further towards there's, there's higher land up that way and uh, larger water sources I hope they can hear me here because it is getting quite windy. So I'm going to get off and hopefully we're going to go and try and find the footprints. So I just started that sentence and realised I didn't finish it. Yeah, so the thing I was saying that could be further up north, where I thought all the mail and stuff is. There's actually a bird, a bird called Merlin. It's a falcon and that's the area where the bird resides. So get on that, there's actually a bird, fal there's a falcon bird species there named Merlin so you know I told you once you start looking it's all there yeah like I said it looks like they do a bit of bird watching here this seems to be like a bird watching post but the fascinating thing about this place is obviously Liverpool's known as like the sunset city because we get the most beautiful sunset ever going down over the uh, the Welsh Peninsula over that way and into the Irish Sea Obviously, as it gets faded into the summer, north that way, so the sun sets as its arch goes closer to the North Pole. In the winter, its arch goes further south. But we get absolutely magnificent sunsets here. And I can imagine if you come here around about 9 o'clock tonight, you'd see like a bright orange and pink sky. I'd be tempted to come back, but not today. Maybe in the future. Seems to be some amateurs here sticking rods in the ground as well, so I don't know what they're doing. I just spoke to that lovely family up there. Uh, they've just redirected me, you can't get access to the site. Just got to go around this way. Uh, I didn't ask what they were doing with them poles. Um, but they weren't local, they weren't from this area, I know that, so... I don't know what they're doing. As I mentioned before, that's the Church of St. Helen in the background over there. Which means that was the woodland that we walked through last time. Uh, obviously a lot further that way, probably about half a mile that way. Where we heard the gunshots as well. Like I say, I probably should have came and visited this place last time. Two birds, one stone. Oh well. Lovely countryside out here though. There you have it, that's the alleged Mesolithic site. To be honest, not much to see there either. It's amazing that you can get away with claiming all this archaeology and all. There's nothing even there to see. 
Um, but you never know, I mean, there's quite a lot of water there, so maybe if the water gets removed, maybe you can see some stone and stuff, but can't see nothing there at the minute, unfortunately. But yeah, that's a good place to sign off. So there you have it, guys, me and Taz. You've just seen that Mesolithic site. Uh, we've been in and around the Ormskirk area. We've managed to come across an old Roman fort, a Roman column, a renovated church with Anglo-Saxon writing allegedly on it. Uh, some of the older buildings around there. Uh, we're now, like I say, the Mesolithic site, not a stone's throw away from where St. Helen's well is. So that just, that's an indication right there of how much history we are surrounded by. Uh, if you only take a look. Now, a lot of people who've been a lot of research that I've been looking into is obviously indicating a lot of historical context in Wales. And there's obviously a debate in and of itself between the people in the north and the south of Wales. Almost like com competitiveness, when actually I don't understand that at all in any level. And then there's obviously the people who are Welsh or English who are competitive against one another. And it's like, you know, we need to move past that. that that's like... That's child's play, you need to move way past that. And as I say, I mean, you come to places like this and you're surrounded by history. Now, I only got into this because of lockdowns. I only started looking at British history because of lockdowns like two years ago. And my mind has been blown. It has been blown completely. But I think it's time we got Taz home for some food. It's quite warm. So yeah. Uh, like I say, this was just really uh, a little educational video on on the, the, the lay of the land, what's around us. And like I've said before previously, this area was known as, well, it, all of Great Britain was ancient Britain. Uh, obviously, through time, the pockets of resistance got smaller to the, the invasions, really, from all over the place, all kinds of different people. But... Yeah, like this area, Lancashire, it's it's steeped in history, it really is. And when you look around online for it, there's not many videos, there's not much context. So I'm putting a bit of content out now myself. And like I say, I will be heading up to like Rivington and stuff in a few weeks. I think people, I've seen a few videos of people doing Riverton's Pike, but not from the angle I'm going to be coming up with. So I say, hope you stay tuned. Enjoyed the little, little walk about with me and Taz today on this lovely fine day. Stay safe. Peace. I'm gonna go in the spirit